So, so today I thought it would be interesting to present a um, comparison of the um, robotic technology in knee replacement surgery known as the macoplasty using the real robot with a uh, traditional knee replacement with and without a tourniquet and um, sort of draw some conclusions about what the technology brings to the uh, patient who is a candidate for knee replacement surgery. I must stress this isn't an, um, this isn't a biased advocate of any one of these technologies. Um, viewers of my site will know that I try to present a neutral um, representation of technologies in how they may be applied. So the macoplasty technology is, is generally applicable to medial compartment arthritis patients whereas total knee replacements can be used for both medial compartment arthritis as well as uh, complete tricompartment osteoarthritis of the knee. So the surgery in the traditional knee replacement categories of uh, with and fin without tourniquet on the left and right respectively of the bottom of your screen have gone on the way. You can see the jigs have been put in place and we are beginning to instrument the distal femur. Uh, a lot of this is done preoperatively. Here we see the um, CT scan data being reviewed um, um, prior to the macoplasty above. Here's where we will position the implants in place uh, in the virtual space. The actual surgery spends a lot of time essentially registering the uh, implant onto the computer. Here you will see us putting in the reflective trackers um, into the patient and this will reflect off an infrared um, a point light source and because of this reflection the computer will know where the femur and tibia is. You'll notice we haven't begun the actual instrumentation for the knee replacement. I've only just begun to do an arthrotomy on the macoplasty panel above. We catch up here on the tibial surgery again to stress the left component the left panel below is the um, one without tonica and the right is with the tonica and we have begun to um, do a instrumentation of the distal femur where a rod has gone into the into the femur and we are beginning to cut the femur on the top we've begun to register the points on the tibia onto the um, uh, computer so the scan data can now be compared with the actual patient and therefore it will know where we are in space. Um, below however uh, we are now um, beginning to do the cuts of the notch which will ultimately facilitate the fitting of the implant onto um, the distal femur. On the top we have now begun to register most of the points of the tibia onto the computer and at the bottom cutting of the distal femur has begun. Now the top here we are beginning to uh, register the ligaments and what we do here is we bring the patient through various uh, angles and range of motion and this is an unprecedented step in knee replacement surgery. As you can see below, we don't do anything close to something like that. With traditional knee replacements, we essentially um, open up the knee like an envelope and put, put the implants in. And when we close the envelope over it, uh, it finds its own center or of rotation. However, on the macoplasty system above, we actually will program in the patient's actual tension and ligament and we work within those parameters to fit the implant to suit the patient. And so that's one example of how this technology is a lot more patient-centric uh, rather than implant-centric, which is the approaches done in traditional knee replacements where we attempt to 
change the axis of the patient so that the implant is loaded in the most optimal way to allow long-term benefit. At the top, very quickly, you can see the yellow areas, that's cartilage. And what we're doing here is we're mapping the patient's cartilage onto the implant. Of course, in a total knee replacement, there's no such concept. Um, and once again, it tends to be more um, centered around implant-specific considerations rather than patient-specific considerations. Here we see at the top we have uh, uh, adjustment of the implant and we can do that in the virtual space. Um, and now we are registering the robot. Now you'll notice a lot of this is essentially registration because there's a lot of planning that goes within the surgical time Whereas if you compare what's being done below, you can see that a lot more of that is spent with the surgical procedure per se. You can see on the bottom right hand corner where the tonicot isn't used, there's a fair bit of bleeding already begun. Um, on the top I'm beginning the bird the tibia and you can see the, the technique used is really not a cut, it's more of a milling or grinding process or burring process where we we take off bits of bone very very superficially the deep you can see that results in minimal uh, bleeding most of these patients do not require blood transfusions whereas in traditional knee replacements a fair amount of blood loss occurs and you uh, do have to transfuse a fair number of these patients So it looks like we're completing the uh, cuts on the distal femur, as you can see above. And um, very soon we will be fitting the um, femoral implants. That's the uh, notch that needs to be cut in the distal femur of the traditional knee replacement below. And then we fit on the implants, whereas with the macoplasty above, you can see we're really doing more of a um, gentle burring of the, the femur to um, make sure that the implant fits with the patient's bone, cartilage and ligamentous um, anatomy. Here below, we are now cutting the tibia. In general, uh, and this is open to variation, but in general, most surgeons in traditional knee replacements will do the femur first and then the tibia, whereas with the macoplasty in general, you want to do the tibia before the femur. Here below, uh, I'm measuring the cut to, to get an estimate of what the axis will be done, whereas with the macoplasty, that's computed and it's not open to error. And. Um, I'm now putting in the tibial implants, uh, the tibial tray at the bottom. And once again, I'd like to stress that this isn't an advocate of any one or other method. It's simply a comparison to show how the two technologies are quite different, even if they are knee replacement surgeries. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. For more information, do go to worldwidewebblimsalvagesurgery.com.